The Broncos have spent the week in London getting ready for a clash with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Both teams have lost four games in a row, so one streak will end. We are getting you ready for kickoff. Hello, I am Phil Milani, joined virtually by Sidney Jones and Eric Dalala. I've missed you guys this week. Uh, how have things been in London, Sydney? We've missed you, Phil. We wish you were out here with us. Things have been really great. The team's been practicing at the Harrow School in London, which is about you know 15 minutes away from Wembley here. And it's a really, really cool school, very historic. Um, apparently, Winston Churchill went to school there. So it's been really fun to see there. And I feel like the team has a new sense of life. You know, they've, they've seem really juiced out of practice this week. And I think it's just been a really great week for the team bonding. You know, it's kind of like a training camp out here. They have to eat at the hotel, stay at the hotel, be together at all times. So I think it's really been great for the camaraderie of the team. And hopefully we'll see that on Sunday. Yeah. I think that, you know, after you've lost four games in a row, you can have this sense of feeling defeated, defeated, deflated, Combine those two words there, but uh, <laughs> I think that that kind of sums up where the Broncos had been, but yeah, maybe uh new energy uh, spending so much time together. Uh, Eric, you think it's been a chance for them to block out the noise? Yeah. I mean, I, I think you get away from some of the negativity, which is important. I, I think that, you know, at least for me, Phil, it doesn't feel like the Broncos played a football game last Sunday. That feels like a world kind of removed from here. And so I do think it's, nice you can you can kind of put that away and almost view this as its own little adventure within the season um, hopefully use it to galvanize this team have a chance to respond to go out and get a win and you know who knows what happens the rest of the year but i, I just think that this is a good opportunity for them to hit the reset button and uh, you know try to get this thing back on track well, there's certainly been a, a lot of talk about the state of the Broncos uh, right now. Here's uh, George Payton's comments from London earlier this week. Well, the results aren't there. Obviously not good enough, uh, two and five, and uh, we all need to get better, and, and it starts with me. And uh, But I do believe in this football team. I do believe in the people in our building, our coaching staff, that uh, we can turn it around. It's only, only seven games. Obviously, we've been in every game, and that's not what it's all about. It's about winning games and and uh, we need to learn how to win football games. We haven't done that. All right, so that's uh, George Payton talking about the state of uh, the Broncos right now, sitting at two and five, looking to uh, get back in the win column this week. And uh, a healthy Russell Wilson uh, certainly will go a long way, Sydney. Yeah, it's, it certainly will, Phil. You know, we only get to watch really the the media portion of practice, but Coach Hackett said just being able to watch. Russell out there, he's been throwing the ball really well, moving in the pocket. You know, he looks more comfortable this week than he did last week. And we heard, also heard Russell say that, you know, earlier in the week. He's ready to roll. He feels great. I think everyone's excited to see him back out there on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, uh, missing his fourth career game last week against the Jets uh, must have been tough watching from the sideline. Not a position uh, Russ has been used to. Uh, Erica, what kind of a boost do you think it would give for the team just to see number three back under center? Yeah. And, you know, that's what we're expecting. Obviously, Nathaniel Hackett said, barring any setback, he's going to play. Uh, didn't have a game status, which indicates he's ready to go. I think it gives you, Phil, a boost in two ways. One is, is the, the play perspective, just what he can do on the field. And this is no disrespect to Brett Rippon, of course, who, who did an admirable job. But Russ just gives you a different element there. You know, he can throw the deep ball. He can create with his feet. You're never going to give up with Russell Wilson there. Um, so that's one element of it. I think the Broncos offense can be more potent with Russ under center. And then secondly, he, he's a Super Bowl champion. We heard Justin Simmons talk this week about the leadership he provides, the faith, the belief that he still gives these players. And so getting that back, Phil, I wouldn't underrate that either. Well, uh, we know that uh, Russell Wilson was busy doing high knees on the mm -hmm. airplane, uh, four hours of working out. I'm sure you guys joined him uh, in the aisle there uh, on the way out to London. But here's what uh, uh, Russ had to say about how he's feeling this week in London. Yeah, I man, I feel great, uh, ready to ready to roll. Um, you know, I'm super locked in, ready to uh, hopefully get a big win in, in London. Obviously, uh, this would be a, a, a key game for us. It's a really good football team we're playing. Uh, I think both of our records don't necessarily represent who we are, and uh, so I think that um, there's going to be a lot of great football. It'd be cool to play back in London again. I remember the last time. I got to play here. Uh, it was pretty special. So time for our third segment of the show. And uh, let's talk about the defensive side of the ball a little bit. Uh, 
each week, this side has been dominant, uh, going up against a tough test, though, in this uh, Jags team, maybe uh, a team that's a little better than we expected, Sydney. Yeah, it definitely, Phil. Um, I, I look at this Jags offense, and one person that really stands out to me is their running back, Travis Etienne. I, I think it took him a couple games to really find um, who he is on this team, but past couple games, um, we've seen him, you know, really explode. I think he's coming off a over a hundred yard rushing game versus the Giants last week, but. You know, I think we're going to see the same defense we've seen week in and week out. Certainly, they'll be wanting to get after uh, Trevor Lawrence here, the second-year quarterback for Jacksonville. Uh, but they'll be without Baron Browning, uh, Randy Gregory also already injured. Uh, Erica, what's the state of this Broncos pass rush? Yeah, I mean, Phil, obviously, uh, you know, with, with trade rumors swirling about Bradley Chubb, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes out and has a big game just kind of a, as a statement, uh, you know, that, that he should be here in Denver. Um, maybe channel some of the uh, emotion he's surely felt this week um, into a big performance, but they'll, they'll need more out of uh, Nick Benito kind of could be his first real extended playing time. Uh, Jonathan Cooper, obviously a guy who uh, has proven himself as a depth player as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's one thing you mentioned the run defense, Phil, but the other thing that Broncos defense could do more of is, is creating takeaways and getting uh, turnovers for this offense. George Payton mentioned that this week. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, he looks good. He looks like he's taken a step in year two, but he's still apt to turn the ball over. And so if the Broncos can slow down the run game, like Sydney mentioned, put Trevor Lawrence in some of these third and longs like they did with Zach Wilson, but this time, you know, take advantage, get a couple of interceptions, force a fumble, uh, maybe give the offense a short field to work with. That'd go a long way. So you want the Broncos defense to just do it all, huh? You want them to just stop them and then also create offense? It could be, uh, it could be nice. It might be the way they need to win right now. Yeah, it does uh, certainly feel that way. But uh, Eric, you mentioned the trade rumors. Of course, Bradley Chubb's name has been out there. Russell Wilson uh, said that he had a chat with Bradley Chubb uh, this week about those. I think Chubb's having his best season. He's been amazing for us. Um, and, you know, obviously he's been a captain. He's been a leader. He's a guy that I love to play with. And uh, obviously, you know, we hope that he, he's with us because, you know, for a long time because, He's special, man. I, I love playing with this guy. His competitive nature is pretty spectacular. Time to wrap up the show now with predictions. Sydney, let's start with you. Phil, I'm going to say 24-17 uh, Broncos. I think the Broncos get the win this weekend before they head into the bye. And they're out here in London. I think um, this week has been good for them. Yeah, yeah that would be nice to uh, get on the winning side of things heading into the bye week. Eric, how about you? Yeah, Phil, I don't feel great about it. Uh, picking you know a, an explosion on offense given the uh you know the injury to russell wilson but i do think you're going to see the broncos take advantage a little bit at least of a jacksonville defense that's still kind of figuring things out themselves but i'm going to say a season high in points uh, i'll go 27 17 broncos wow okay so a couple of wins there uh i think that this jacksonville team is better than the jets team the broncos played last week actually uh the record certainly doesn't reflect that but i do think that there's more uh more to worry about with this team so i'm going to say i'm going to say about 24 for jacksonville and for the broncos i'll say 20 uh so uh of course last week i was right so i'm one up on you guys uh, for this <laughs> Oh, uh, I know you got to get out to a pub, so uh, we'll, we'll say goodbye. <laughs> you, Phil. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, that's Sydney Jones and Eric Galala. I am Phil Milani, and this has been Ready for Kickoff.